Good morning, young persons. Welcome back to the High School Woodshop. You know, we're making a series of videos where we cover the machines, techniques, and materials that we use in the High School Woodshop. Today's segment, bandsaw. This is a Jet 18-inch model. It's a woodworking bandsaw. Works fine, lasts a long time. Won't rust, bust, or collect dust. This machine right here is specifically for woodworking it does not have variable speed. The speed is set, it goes about 3,000 RPMs. Way too fast for metal. Metal requires uh, usually under about 300 RPM. This machine is called the bandsaw because the blade is basically a band of steel. As you can see, we have two large wheels, one on the top that spins free and the one on the bottom which as you can see is uh, belt driven off the motor. The band goes in a lo uh, long oval down this way down to the bottom wheel comes around the top and goes back around again. When the machine's on and the motor's turning it's moving like this at 3000 rpm. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the parts and pieces on the machine. First off is that we have this black knob here, which is the uh, upper door uh, lock knob. We have this uh, hand crank here on the front. It is the upper guide crank. It raises and lowers the upper blade guide, like this. We set the upper blade guide for the height of the material that will be going through the machine. Underneath here, we have a hand, another hand crank that sets the uh, blade tension. This is the upper blade guide. On the front over here, you'll see that there is the on-off switch. You turn it on by pushing in on the green button. To turn it off, you just push on the red paddle. This, of course, is the blade. Like the rest of the machines in this shop, we do have a table surface right here. Notice that my table has an orange rectangle that's been painted on and that is the place where your fingers will not be when you're operating the saw. That's the place where your fingers will not be when you're cutting wood on this saw. On the back side over here there's a dust port. Of course if this is the upper door then this must be the lower door and we have a lower door lock knob. Very important safety consideration that if these doors are closed if the machine is on. If you get tangled up in that wheel that's spinning around in there at 3000 RPM, it's going to ruin your day. Okay, there's some steps that we're going to go through to ensure that we can operate this machine safely and effectively. Before we check the machine and prepare the machine to be used, before we check the material to be used, we're going to check ourselves and make sure that we're ready to work in the shop without being a hazard to ourselves or the people around us. You must wear uh, eye protection, safety glasses, when you operate this machine. Occasionally you may need to also wear hearing protection, although it's rare. It doesn't generate enough noise normally for us to need to wear hearing protection. If we're doing something noisy and we're going to be doing it for a while, like all very long, and we'll put on earmuffs also. Safety glasses protect your eyes from dust, they protect your eyes from flying pieces of wood, and they protect your eyes from uh, blunt trauma. Young persons, are your everyday eyeglasses suitable for wearing? Will these substitute for safety glasses? No, they will not. I do not care if you order your everyday eyeglasses from some Swiss optics company and you can take three 7.62 rounds in a row without penetrating the glass. You must put on safety glasses to work in the shop and to use this machine. Taking into consideration all of the machines that we have present in the wood shop, this is one of the safest to use. If you can manage to keep your fingers away from the spinning band of death right here, then uh, it's very safe to use. Kickbacks and uh, hazards of that sort just aren't a, uh, a hazard on this machine. What the bandsaw is good for is 
cutting curved lines. If we're going to cut a straight line, we have uh, machines that will do it better and more precisely. For it to be able to cut that curve efficiently, uh, it greatly depends on which uh, blade is installed. So the thinner the blade is this way, and the thinner the blade is this way, greatly affects its cutting performance. The wider the blade is this way, uh, is going to determine how tight of a radius that you can cut in your material. So there's a uh, rough chart that you can find on the internet that say, uh, you know, a 3 8 blade will cut a circle with a two and a half inch diameter, whatever. Um, your mileage may vary. So your thinner, narrower blades allow you to cut a curve of a much smaller radius and thicker, wider blades are better for cutting relatively straight lines. So step one, prepare yourself. Step number two is prepare the machine. Make sure it has the correct blade on it for what you're trying to do. Remember, your thinner, narrower blade is for cutting a tighter radius. We use a thicker, wider blade for cutting a larger radius. You're going to want to check the material. The first thing on the material is, I'm going to tell you, is that one side of the material must be flat and straight to be used on this machine so that when you sit on the table, it sits there without rocking. One thing we will not do ever is cut round stock on this machine. We could probably build a special jig or something if it's what we really needed to do for some reason, but we're not. Do not cut round stock on this machine in this shop. You notice that in this shop, most of the machines have an orange zone painted where your fingers are not allowed to be while the machine is running, and the bandsaw is no different. In step four, we're talking about using the machine correctly. Number one, there is an orange zone here, or an orange rectangle. Do not allow your fingers to be in this area when you're using the machine. For example, if you're cutting something very small, even though the machine can handle it, you will not probably be able to do this in here because it will require your fingers to be in the horn zone, and that's unacceptable. When you're cutting something on the machine and something goes wrong where the material starts to bind and it's just not working very well, do not try to back the material out of the cut. You must turn the machine off and wait for the machine to come to a complete stop and then remove the material from the blade. As you're using the machine and small pieces of your cut begin to build up around the blade, do not try to remove them with the blade moving. Always be aware of the blade. Those pieces, if, if you're going to try to remove them, use a separate uh, stick to uh, push the material off the table. Okay, step number five is uh, deal with the unexpected. When you're using the machine, and you all of a sudden hear a, a clicking noise while the machine is running, then you're going to want to turn the machine off immediately. I've never seen it or heard it myself, but if the blade were to get a crack in it that was starting to work, and um, it will make a clicking noise as it's going around in the cabinet. So we're going to shut the machine off, and you're going to call me over, and we're going to uh, figure out what needs to be done. Dealing with the unexpected, once again, you're going to want to avoid distractions, and please avoid being the distraction. If you are using this machine and some person comes up to you, taps you on the shoulder, or tries to get your attention, they are not your friend. You need to ignore them, finish what you're doing, wait till the machine comes to a complete stop after you've turned it off, and then deal with the distraction. This machine is very safe to use. You don't have to worry about getting a kickback. Uh, the material will just sit there with the blade running and it's not going to go anywhere. However, you must avoid putting your fingers into the blade. If this m machine will slice right through a 2x4, it's going to slice through your finger like butter. So one of the ways that we're going to make sure we keep our finger out of the blade was keep your fingers out of the orange zone. And if someone tries to distract you, you're going to ignore them, finish what you're doing, and then deal with that distraction. Step number six, very important, please use common sense. If you're doing something on this machine 
and it just doesn't seem right, it doesn't feel right, it doesn't sound right, if you're not comfortable running the machine, then stop, back up, wait, watch another student use the machine or call me over and I will demonstrate the machine to you again. We'll talk about exactly what you're going to do and how it's going to get accomplished. I don't want you to do something in here on this machine or any other machine in this shop if you don't feel comfortable, if you're not confident of what you're doing, if you're not confident of what's going to happen next. Were your questions?